Good afternoon, FIU, and welcome to today's FIU's Parents and Caregivers Forum on this Friday afternoon. We are so delighted to have so many of you join us today, and we're pleased to receive so many questions in advance. That was very important for us. Uh, listen, today's discussion is being live streamed on the FIU Facebook page and is being recorded and will also be available later on the news.fiu.edu and the FIU social, social channels. Uh, we hope that your families are continuing to fare well and remain healthy uh, in this situation that we're all living through. I hope you're being the leaders in your homes by emanating calm, intentionality, clarity to the extent possible, flexibility, and creativity. It works in your personal lives also. I hope that you're doing your part wherever you go to mitigate the possibility of spread by wearing your face coverings, keeping your hands washed, exercising physical distancing, and making sure you avoid large congregations where possible. These are the things that you and I can do in the absence of a vaccine or cure to keep us all safe. Lastly, I hope that you're bearing in mind the importance of self-care and patience with one another. Uh, what we know for sure is that there's no end in sight right now. And it tells us that we have to learn how to live effectively, live our lives uh, with the presence of COVID in our midst. We'll have to take responsibility not only for our own health and our own well-being, but the health and well-being of our families, the health and well-being of each other, of our FIU family, and even of the academic enterprise. Before we get started, I want to take a moment uh, to explain why we're even having this conversation today. It's really a listening session. We really want to hear uh, what you have to say. Uh, in return to, uh, in your returning content to us from the campus survey, we did see clearly that a frequent concern was regarding the availability of, of child care in the situations that we're in and or having to work at home while you have your children there if we're in a remote setting. We wanna talk about that today. We have information today that we didn't have when we met last time, right? Uh, we now know that the schools are gonna be remote locally. Um, there are instances of adult care uh, that we have that we have to address. So a lot of mixed feelings you know, were revealed uh, as we reviewed all of your questions. Um, you know, we understand that there are so many things happening around us and, and we know that there's, you know, there's relief for some that we're able to, you know, be remote. But on the other hand, there's a task ahead for having to care for those that you're attending to while you work, whether that's children or, or adults. So because there was such a concern and spirit with us, we wanted to take the day and really talk with you to hear, not do, do more listening than talking today. And as we hear from you, we can better understand your challenges and then position ourselves to collectively come up with some solutions. So uh, we really want to listen to you today, but before we do that, allow me to introduce our esteemed president, Dr. Mark B. Rosenberg, to share welcoming remarks with you. Dr. Rosenberg. Good afternoon, FIU. Welcome to our FIU Parents and Caregivers Town Hall. We're just two days away from a momentous occasion, the graduation of thousands of our students on Sunday morning. We hope you will join us to celebrate that graduation. I wanna congratulate those students who are graduating. I wanna congratulate their families for their success, inevitably born out of their search for opportunity and their belief in the hope that is promised by higher education. Each and every one of you should rejoice in this milestone for our students. You helped to make it happen. You helped to make it happen. And this was no easy feat. You see, all of us have been through a lot these last couple of months. So let's take a moment of silence for the thousands who have perished and are sick because of COVID-19. And a moment of silence as well for those who have died because of needless violence and the forebears of some who were enslaved against the laws of civility and righteousness. Thank you. As you know, 
We have chosen to remain in remote mode through the summer. We are going to initiate a new semester of classes to face conditions permitting or hybrid, but most either remote or online in just a few weeks. Our university's essential services will continue. They will continue. Most will be in remote, but we're going to need to repopulate in a limited way to meet the needs of our hardworking students who are living in our residence halls or who will come to campus to study or to take a lab or a class or indeed to seek health care or counseling. You see, the life of the mind cannot be put on hold. We have to find a way to transcend as we strive to keep you healthy and with peace of mind. All of you are going to be involved, either remotely or mask to mask, in our noble enterprise to educate our students this fall. And we're here this afternoon, and we are curious about your situations, because to paraphrase some spoken words yesterday, you may have heard them, we embrace our responsibilities to build a better university and learning community. And that begins with you, our backbone and our strength. So today's conversation is about listening to you and the special challenges that you confront as we plan to initiate the fall semester in just a couple of weeks. And we hear you. We hear you. We have been moved by what you have accomplished and how you have accomplished it on behalf of our students. And we know how hard this has been. Listen to one of your coworkers. She wrote, my 32 year old son has autism and his adult day training program has closed indefinitely. My mom is 83 years old. She can stay with him while I'm at work, but we've all been personally affected by this pandemic. She continues, sadly, my beloved 54 year old brother passed away from COVID-19 in New York. He was a New York City public school teacher for over 32 years. He and my mom were very close and lived in the same house. She's living with us in Florida now. I'm watching out for her since she is exhibiting signs of anger and depression. She concludes, these are extremely challenging times for all of us. So now, more than ever, we got to work together. We got to help each other. And here's the question. How can we graduate those students in, who want to graduate this December if we can't get better at being better? We have to get better at being better. And that starts with us looking out for us. That's what this afternoon's all about. How to stay healthy, to push our learners forward, how to stay healthy to ensure that your children do not fall behind, how to stay healthy to continue to provide loving care for your family members, your family members, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, mothers, uncles, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunts, uncles. We get it. It's at FIU. Here, we strive for a better, kinder, moral ecosystem. And earlier this week, as, as El Pagné mentioned, we sent each of you a survey via email so that we can learn about your caregiving responsibilities. To those who filled it out, thank you. A poll will pop up on your screen shortly that is gonna help us understand your needs even further so that we can better address them. I'm sure that we're gonna elaborate during the next hour about some of the survey finding, but let me give you a brief summary. Of the more than 1,800 respondents, close to half of you indicated you have a child 18 or younger living at home. 84% of you said that supervised care would be needed for those children. And 64% said you would not be able to obtain child care during the work day. Close to 20% of the respondents indicated that they are responsible for the care of an adult. 
and 63% of you said that, that they would not be able to secure care during the work day. So 20% of our respondents are responsible for the care of an adult, one in five. Now we know that you've all been working hard, both remotely and on site, amidst very difficult circumstances. You've been working hard to ensure our FIU continues its commitments to our students. You've been working hard to promote our research initiatives and our community engagement. And we've developed this program called Panthers Protecting Panthers, that we have to get better at being better. So this afternoon, we're gonna listen for the purpose of understanding how we can ease your path, reduce your anxiety about the future, and help to maintain and build your hope. This positive energy, you know it. It's a hallmark of our institution. We can't lose it. We won't lose it. But it's up to each and every one of us to do that, to maintain Panthers protecting Panthers. So no, this survey was not about who should work where, and that was in some of the responses. It's about us listening more about how we can help, how we can continue to carry your, how you can continue to carry your fair share as we know you want, your fair share to improve the quality of life of our entire Panther community. So no more speeches, El Panier. We're here to listen. How can we help you with regard to your children or your caregiving? What do we need to know? How can we help? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rosenberg. So, so you know, and I think it's important for our 800 listeners plus, 800 plus listeners to know that this forum was coordinated just because of that. What Dr. Rosenberg just shared, he had a conversation with a couple of members of our value community as it related to child and or adult care. And, and, and it provoked this very meeting, this very meeting. So we really do wanna hear from you. We are now in your living rooms, right? In your home offices. And so you have the opportunity to have a fireside chat with your president and your VP of HR and several other incredible FIU leaders that are standing by to hear uh, what you would have to say. So, so, you know, go into that chat box, and keep your comments and questions as succinct as possible so we can hear them. We want to want you to post them. If you raise your hand, we'll acknowledge you. Um, and if it is a question, we can ask one of our participants uh, who are in the background, uh, ready to answer your questions live. Uh, we have staff members that are responding directly to the chat. And we, you know, we're ready to have this conversation. Again, we want to hear from you uh, uh, and your thoughts and concerns and your experiences. Uh, even, you know, how is it that, how are you feeling right now? That's what we're doing, we're having a conversation. Imagine us in the GC, um, in the, the, the open area with a cup of coffee, that you can have a conversation uh, with us and talk about it. I'll tell you, it's, um, we have a question that had come in earlier about uh, how, the, how is it, you know, if we, let me just see how it says here. If, will we be able to choose to stay home if our position allows taking into consideration child care responsibilities and immunosuppressed people in our home who may be at high risk. And so, so that's loaded. There's a, there's a lot uh, in there. I'm going to call on my colleague, Carlos Flores, if he would share uh, a response to a question like that, because that, that's one question, but it may be one that many of you have uh, in mind. Thank you, Opanye, and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, so as President Rosenberg mentioned, uh, we will continue to operate largely remotely, and that is because of the current circumstances that we are experiencing uh, with the pandemic. The difference between the fall semester, the summer, and the spring that we have just uh, passed is that the fall semester will begin with a limited number of students, faculty, and staff on our campuses, which remain open. And one of the common themes is who is the best person to determine if I have to return? And that would be your direct supervisor or department director or chair um, who best knows what is the need to support our students for the purposes of the fall semester. 
Um, there was another question there about immune compromise, and that is where we want to also um, promote the FFCRA, which is the Families First Corona Response Act. It's very technical in nature, but that act was specifically done to not only care for COVID cases, but also child care for K through 12 specifically. Um, so we will communicate additional information, how you can benefit from that. Um, and you do need to talk to your area supervisor um, to determine what is the best approach to support our students for the fall semester. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. And, and guys, I stand corrected. I asked you, I, I asked you to go to the chat feature. Please pardon me. I should have asked you to go to the Q&A feature. My apologies for that. That's what we want to uh, receive your questions and your comments. And guess what? You can even comment li uh, live. So we want to hear your voice. The president and I have been waiting to have this conversation with you. So we want to hear your voice. That's important. I'm going to ask Marilise to ask her question live. Marilise, Maris, Maris, Marisely, Marisely, would you ask your question live and then give me the correct pronunciation of your name? My apologies. You on mute? Can we unmute Ms. Rojas? I don't think that we have a, a them to give us a few moments. We, we're going to un, unmute her. Marilise has a question. Maurice. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Hi. Hi. And a lot of the, the, the poll that just went out is mostly talking about assistance with children who are of school age. But people like me who have toddlers and infants at home, I would traditionally send my son to daycare, but I can't now. Um, a lot of the daycares are closed during the pandemic or they're severely limited with how many um, children can be at the daycare at a time. So I don't know what kind of assistance would be provided for people with toddlers, it's not like we need a tutor or anything. We would need a babysitter. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a very good point. Would you pronounce your first name for me? Let's start there. <laughs> well, my name is Mariselli. Mariselli, Mariselli. Thank you so much. I remember those days when I had those toddlers around the house, and then I didn't have opportunity to work remotely. And I'm not certain if your current work ex work role allows you to work remotely, uh, but. That's a, that's a great question. I'm sure many are on the line are experiencing the same thing. Let me do this. Uh, what would you like to see, right, when you talk about uh, how this could work out for you and those that have toddlers who are not school age, what, 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 what do you think an option or a couple of options could be for the leadership to consider uh, to support you in, in that, condition, that situation? Um. Well, I've been very lucky and blessed that my current position as an academic advisor has allowed me to be fully remote without, with minimal um, issues, which has been great. I'm not sure if it's the same for everybody else in other positions with the university, um, but I feel like what would make it easier is I really don't know. I just, you just put me on the spot there. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, we're listening today. So for those of you that are listening to us, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a conversation. We don't have all the answers and because we don't even know what all the needs are. So what you're sharing with us is great. It's, you know, we're able to hear what you're, what you're saying. Um, but do think about that as, as you all chat with us. I want this to be a chat. Consider us in your living room having a cup of Starbucks coffee. <laughs> I do know that FIU has an on-campus daycare. I know it, the priority goes to the students who are parents and a lot of the faculty and staff who use that service kind of get put on a wait list. I don't know if they would expand that service um, for the daycare to be open to more staff members, um, but I would have, I really have to think about this question. Sure, sure. sure. <laughs> but that's good and that's, you know what, and one of the things we said earlier is we're protecting each other, so we all, you, this is a let me tell you, this is a brilliant group of professionals at Florida International University. So we want to hear, you know, your thoughts. So I appreciate you bringing that forward so we can all begin to think about, you know, what could be done, if anything, because that's the other reality, guys. There are some things that we just won't be able to do, right? But we want to pull together, want to hear your thoughts, hear what you, uh, you, you could recommend, and we can, you know, see what we can put together. So I appreciate you uh, for sharing that. Thank you so much. 
But thank you for calling on me first. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Rosenberg, did you have something to add? No, I mean, that's, this is why we're here. We need to understand what, what is really going on out there. So I appreciate that Marcelli was, you know, willing to, you know, speak up. You got to, I mean, that's very important here. Or you can send us a Q&A if you don't want to speak up, and, and we'll try to answer that as well. Great. Thank you. I do have an anonymous question here, um, and it is, I'm going to ask my colleague, Dr. Vehar or Dr. Deinhardt to uh, prepare to jump in on this. Would FIU be able to provide early childhood education in home for toddlers? So thank you, uh, Vice President Hudson. I, I, I appreciate that, uh, the opportunity to address the question. And I, and I think really at this point, um, what we are having discussions about and, and building FIU's uh, great team of folks who are dedicated to, to providing um, dynamic solutions during this difficult time is really just taking a better understanding of, of what, um, of what our, our, our employees really need. Um, we had not, in, in all honesty, provisioned a conversation around in-home childcare. Um, that's certainly logistically a, a different opportunity. I would imagine, um, and I am guessing, but I would imagine that our School of Education um, has many contacts in the community of folks who are set up to do that, who, who are licensed and they may be open. Um, but what, what we have had conversations with our discipline experts in early childhood education and particularly in some of the younger uh, education is important at all levels, but there are certain milestone years as, as children enter kindergarten, first and second grade to get those fundamentals in, particularly around reading and language. Um, and we have certain expertise in that. Um, there, are, there are things that we are discussing that we have uh, provided in the past and, and over the summer that we would consider to scale. But at this point, um, based on the, the safety and well-being of everybody involved, those would be uh, virtual. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, um, I'm going to ask this next one because it's very, very close. And I'm going to do this, Elizabeth. Um, I want you to speak briefly because I want our, our, our listeners to jump in. Um, but, but this question is, is along the lines of what you just responded to. Um, I'm so appreciative that FIU is considering tutoring opportunities. Will you have options for children with special needs? And could we explore opportunities with FIU's CCF? And, and again, uh, this is all dialogue, all exchange. So um, if you can you know, share a little further about specifically children with special needs. So absolutely, right? We, we um, CCF is, is part of the conversation. The president uh, said, leave no stone unturned, um, as he called on, on all the professional staff. And uh, we have um, certain expertise uh, in, with CCF. Uh, we have a relationship with um, foundations in the community. Uh, we have our race program. We have a psychology department that is very strong and dedicated um, to supporting not only children with special needs, but that additional um, impact and, and uh, resonance that parents of children with special needs have, particularly during these difficult times. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now I'm going to turn to these 718 participants listening on this line, and I'm going to ask you a question um, for you to share your thoughts. What do you think about when you hear flexibility in work scheduling? I want to hear what you think that means. And I have some experts here that can talk about that. But I want to, you know, sometimes you can have the same word and people have different definitions for it. So let's talk about what you think. I'm talking to the 717 out there listening to us. What do you think about? Somebody, uh, would you please un uh, raise your hand so we can unmute you and you can share with us what you think about. Because Dr. Rosenberg, you know, we are working, as you know, you, you and the provost have charged us to really uh, craft a um, a, 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 a remote policy that speaks to these things as we're moving in this direction. And so we are uh, using best practices and such, but I'm interested to hear what our 713 individuals uh, uh, want to, um, what they think about what flexible work means. 
And I think I can call on someone's name actually to have them here. I have Michelle has raised her hand. Let's uh, receive Michelle. Take your phone off mute, Michelle. Let's hear what you have to say about flexibility. Hi, thank you. So I'm actually stationed here in Largo at uh, the National Forensic Science Technology Center. So we're remote on a different level even uh, from FIU. Um, but for me, it's been really helpful because not only am I currently five and a half months pregnant with my second child, I have a 20 month old, thank you, at home. Um, and so being able to work flexibly for me, especially under the guidance of Kevin Lothridge at NFSCC and FIU has allowed me not to feel guilty for taking an hour to put my, you know, to feed my son, put him down for a nap, you know, get a bite to eat for myself, take a beat and then get back to work. Mm -hmm. You know, no one is breathing down my back that I'm not, you know, um, in my chair in front of my computer for eight continuous hours. That sometimes that means that I'm working you know, at 7.30, but sometimes it means I'm starting at 8.30 because my son's had a rough morning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, understanding that there are just, it's not, I'm not consistently with my schedule, mm -hmm. um, but I'm consistently getting work done and able to do things because I have support of people who understand when my son is sitting on my lap during a, a Zoom meeting, mm -hmm. telling everyone that his favorite color is red. <laughs> you know, um, we're working on the FIU blue and gold, but um, I that's, think those are yeah, a little <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> that needs you. That that's that that, that, that you need to get. Uh, yeah. Get well, Elmo is red, so that's why. But we're working on it. Um, you know, but it's it's been nice that. I've still been able to do things like have a successful uh, forensic science um, uh, symposium that we hosted 701 attendees from 36 countries from around the world. And I did that all remotely, all while being pregnant, all while handling a, a 20 month old at home. But it was because I had the flexibility from the people at FIU and the support of our staff that allowed me to sometimes answer emails at seven o'clock at night because I couldn't do that from the hours of, you know, noon to two. Michelle, if I could high five you in the middle of COVID-19, I would. <laughs> uh, shout out to your supervisor and I appreciate you sharing with us what flexibility means to us, Thank, means to you. Thank you so much. Dr. Rosenberg, did you. you want to chat, chime in on that at all? Uh, I'll listen a little bit more and then I'll, it's, it, I, I second the, uh, an accomplishment keep it up you know keep on keeping on that's awesome but i i have a i'll have a broader comment on that question late as i listen to others great thank you um i'm gonna call on um beatrice she has uh, uh, um, something she would like to say about flexibility so we'd like to hear from you b beatrice hi everybody how are you can you hear me great how are you yes good good um, so it's uh, it's really interesting. I think someone in the chat also in the Q&A brought up the Children's Creative Learning Center and um, our son Eddie actually goes there or went there until, um, you know, everything started in March. Um, but it's been a ginormous blessing. So my Q&A comment was if there's any ideas in the future to expand this amazing resource we have on campus uh, beyond a kindergarten, I would totally be up for putting my son back there immediately. Um, because it's it's just been a blessing for him and for our family. Um, but aside from that, I also wanted to um, talk a little bit about flexibility. I think that I've been really blessed with an amazing uh, supervisor, but I do have an 11 month old similar to I think Mariselli um, and a five year old here at home. And now with going virtual, the thought of being able to take care of them and work is, is definitely something that is concerning. And my husband's a teacher at a private school here in Miami, so he needs to teach as well um, on, on the computer too. So it'll be interesting to have all of this happen. For me, I think flexibility really talks about can we uh, continue having a conversation about shifting hours, possibly evening hours. Obviously, we all do work at different times. Um, and if we're not forward facing, where students are absolutely necessary to, um, you know, the eight to five, um, is that a possibility? So to have that conversation, depending on, of course, what our work is. Um, and, and sometimes Saturdays, I mean, I, I work uh, as an advisor to our amazing student ambassadors, and I do sometimes work on Saturdays with them for their retreats or leadership opportunities and so on. So maybe I won't work on a Friday, but there's the opportunity for a Saturday. Is that really, you know, something that can potentially help others as well? 
Well, thank you. Thank you, Betty. So good to hear your voice and appreciate your comments. We appreciate that. Um, I'm going to move to Basinta. Basinta has a question she wants to ask live, and I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Rodon if you'd be prepared to respond. Basinta? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. So my particular question was about um, anticipating, you know, the reopening of schools with Dade County. You know, we're talking about October. Um, and we know that our concern is certainly going to increase upon our children going back to Dade County public schools um, because of the likelihood of any kind of transmission. Since we have a testing site so close to us, is it possible to have certain days, certain time periods where we could bring our children or our family members to be tested upon that reopening? Santa, a good afternoon and thank you so much for that question. Uh, first and foremost, yes, our testing site is in proximity, as you know, next to FIU campus. We are currently testing five-year-olds and older. Uh, we, it, it just so happens that this week we're trying to see how we can logistically work uh, in partnership with the county to be able to provide um, a specific, maybe a specific day or, or um, a bit more of um, flexibility for both our faculty, staff, and even uh, their family to be able to get tested. So the answer would be it is available. And as far as the logistics, we will be able to uh, be forthcoming with a, uh, a proper uh, a plan for that. So if your child is five and above, currently even now, uh, we can go ahead and test them. As you know, because of the storm and pending storm, we are closed and we hope to be reopened uh, by Tuesday. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you so much for your question. Dr. Rosenberg, let me allow you to uh, share a few words. We're, we're at about half hour in, and I wanna move to a, another um, topic away from flexibility. So you, would you go ahead and share the- Yeah, just quickly, um, I, uh, just on the issue of uh, flexibility and the, the uh, issue of hours, I mean, clearly there's, everybody has their assignment, and um, there's some assignments that are gonna be better addressed uh, in concert with others. Um, in, in, a, in a very organized fashion. Other assignments ha just have to get done. I've always said that uh, anybody who lives in Miami should expect, the best that they can expect is to get into uh, uh, a, a rhythm, but it's very hard to get into a routine. And I think we've all found that in the last couple of months. So rhythm versus routine. Uh, and then um, we did get a question in the survey as well, or what about Saturday and Sunday? If I couldn't work, you know, during the week because I have family care or child care responsibilities, what about uh, could I could I uh, do that on Saturday and Sunday? So I think we're looking at that as well. So in some res in many respects, nothing is off the table. Um, what the board our board will insist upon is that everybody uh, completes their assignments um, with high quality and um, and and um, in a timely fashion. And so that, by the way, we're very pleased with how the summer has unfolded as it relates to that, I want you to know. Uh, and so that's, that's gonna be very important. I also wanna point out that in our strategic plan, we did talk about the importance of remote work. So the provost and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the planners were very much thinking ahead. I don't think they were thinking about something quite as as massive as, as what we have now, but it, it very, very much is in our plan. So uh, we, I think these kinds of questions are very helpful because they sharpen us up and they enable us to really do, do get a, have a greater likelihood of getting it right. So I wanna thank you. Thank you, appreciate that feedback. Um, I'm gonna turn over and ask uh, Dean Heidhouse to prepare for, for this great question coming from Carlene Benson. Um, some parents feel woefully unprepared to manage virtual learning for our children. Would the School of Education, perhaps psychology, consider providing parents with some virtual training on what we can do better to prepare our children for the new school year, as well as some limited training on teaching pedagogy, more specifically, how to teach our children? Yeah, thanks, Alpanya. I mean, that's a, that's a great question. And the answer is yes, we are working right now to put those resources together, 
both for how to teach uh, kids at different levels in this setting, how to manage virtual learning, but also some of the mental health aspects in the Center for Children and Family and Department of Psychology are bringing their resources to bear. So uh, you can look forward to having these resources available uh, for you. And I think across the board, we're trying to bring the expertise we have in our faculty and staff to provide the resources we can. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna uh, pose this question to one of my team members um, from the Division of Human Resources. And this is one that's come up on a couple of occasions. Uh, this was an anonymous question and it says, I live with my 80 year old grandfather at home. I wouldn't feel comfortable coming back to campus. How can I ensure I will still be able to keep my job and work from home? Uh, Carlos, you or Joanne can um, speak to that if you would, please. Sure, thank you, Opanye. Um, So along with those questions, well, first of all is because of the circumstances, um, we are continuing to support the remote uh, model. And however, if you do feel, you know, there's several questions around there. Um, so the, as a result of the COVID-19 emergency policy that was created, um, it does give supervisors the flexibility to change the schedule based on work availability. So um, when we talk about creativity and flexibility, one of the things that we're expecting of our supervisors is to make sure that we can continue to fulfill our obligation to our students, but at the same time, take those factors into consideration for our workforce. There was another question about pregnancy. There was another question about immune, uh, you know, uh, compromised system. Um, if you need an accommodation, a specific accommodation, our office of um, our, our idea office, which is one second, our office of inclusion, diversity, equity, and access, can assist with coordination of reasonable and appropriate accommodations for employees with documented disabilities, and that's important. Um, so, so those processes are in place. The combination of the accommodations and the flexibility that the managers can do under the COVID-19 emergency policy um, can definitely make an impact and address those concerns directly. Thank you, appreciate that. So guys, we have almost 20 minutes left, but I want to open this up because I want to ask of my 731 participants, Dr. Rosenberg, I want to ask them to tell me what they understand the FFCRA to be. And let me tell you why I'm, I'm bringing that forward. Today's conversation is about uh, childcare, right? And so there are provisions in there. Well, what good are the provisions if you don't know what that's about, right? So I wanna hear what your thoughts are about the FFCRA, the Families First Coronavirus Act uh, provisions. And I want you to tell me uh, either what you know of it or what you'd like to know of it. And if you've used it, I really want you to want to hear from you so others can hear about that provision that has been uh, helpful to you uh, during this time. So I'm gonna give you um, two seconds to, be, to blow my Q&A up so I can call on you and let you share with us about FFCRA. It's a, a wonderful benefit <clears throat> uh, that has been afforded us um, through December 31st. We have uh, prepared for the university a um, COVID emergency uh, policy that embeds those features there. So I'm interested to know who of you have used that. And maybe we can draw from one of our questions uh, that we were able to um, speak about that. Uh, let me ask, um, okay, so this question allows, uh, Carlos, I'm gonna call on you again while we wait for our individuals to come and, and, and talk to us about FFCRA. If you would say, respond to this, what is expected of employees that have children doing online learning regarding returning to campus. And that'll give opportunity to hear about those provisions. Okay, thank you, Opanye. Um, as mentioned earlier, FFCRA, in fact, one of the main components of that act is for childcare and not only childcare, but there was another comment about uh, childcare provider, not necessarily K through 12. And that provision uh, is specifically for caring for a child whose school or place of care is closed 
or child care provider is unavailable for reasons related to COVID-19. Um, so one of the, you know, there are limits to it. Uh, and there's a misconception that I would like to just clarify real quick. Um, if you look at the act and our website, uh, there's a Corona, a COVID-19 uh, frequently asked questions that has a lot of these uh, questions answered and a lot of relevant information. But I'll give you some examples on how it's being used currently. Um, so you do have, if you have that long-term need for childcare, and at this point, we don't know, but the, the provision of this act is until December 31st. Um, um, it does give you the ability under the FMLA framework of 12 weeks of, of assisted, of leave, right? Even though it does have a cap of two thirds pay, um, you can certainly supplement that with your personal leave. And, and part of the COVID-19 emergency policy allows you to use sick leave for childcare purposes under this pandemic, which is a huge benefit and a change to prior policy. Uh, so for example, if uh, we have scenarios, so if I have a young uh, child that I need to assist with homeschooling, we have instances where somebody says, I will take eight hours a week, but I will distribute that personal preference either two days during the week for a total of eight hours, or maybe one day uh, on Friday, take eight hours to assist in the schooling of the child. And, and at this time, the use of that time over that expended, extended period of time of up to 12 weeks under the FMLA framework allows you the flexibility to not only fulfill your obligations, um, but also be able to assist uh, with home learning and with the supplement of your own personal leave, not be able to take a pay cut as well. Um, in addition to that, we also have cases uh, if the leave balance that needs to be supplemented has been depleted and you have not exceeded your FMLA uh, 12 weeks for other purposes, then we do have an emergency sick leave pool bank that you can draw from as well. So we do encourage you to please look into FFCRA. Uh, that is specifically created for homeschooling assistance. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you, Carlos. And you can always reach out to your HR division, hr.fiu.edu, call any of us directly, and we will support you in that and assist you. And, and I'll answer the next question. Um, it says, does FFCRA leave need to be taken all at once, as in 12 continuous weeks? And I think Carlos just clarified that you can supplement. It does not have to be taken all at once. It just has to be taken before December 31st. Okay, um, I'm going to ask Aliyah Fons Shai to prepare to answer this next question. I have a question about testing for children. My daughter is 32 but disabled. What would be the best way for me to get her tested? Aliyah Fons Shai can answer that for us. Aliyah, are you? Uh, can you unmute? Oh, I apologize, Aneta. I'm sorry, Aneta's gonna answer for that. Yes, thank you, Alpanya, and thank you, Aliyah, for your question. Again, at our testing site, as I alluded to earlier, we are testing five-year-olds and up, and uh, we have already been able to assist to test uh, disabled, uh, ch both children and adults. So she, uh, you're able to take her in your car, uh, just to say that we have changed the type of test at the testing site. It is now a saliva test. It is less uncomfortable and, it's, uh, and you will have a provider to assist. Although it is a self-administered test, we will be able to have providers there to assist with your daughter. So um, you are able to, to send her and we're able to test her. And again, I also want to say that the testing at the county site is free of charge. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, I, I want to ask a question that is um, concerning an autoimmune disorder. And I'm going to ask um, Joanne if you would prepare to answer this. If you have an autoimmune disorder but are listed as essential personnel, what are the expectations for those of us having to be on campus when we have been doing our work remotely? Good afternoon. Um, thank you all. Um, so the expectation is that um, we would follow and ask the same questions. Can that position continue to work from home? 
remotely? Can they provide the services that we need for our students and continue as we have been, if they have been? Um, if they are required to come in because we are um, expecting a limited amount of students back on campus and that position is needed, then we would work with that employee to ensure that they follow um, the safety measures that we've been um, communicating since um, the beginning, um, which is you know physical distancing, washing your hands, um, and make sure you wear your facial ma mask, uh, facial covering, um, because all those measures will help keep um, you safe and those around you. Um, and um, so, so that would be a conversation that we would have with the supervisor um, and make that determination. Thank you, thank you so much, Joanne. We are nearing our end, we're having so much fun, but we will not hang up until we hear the voice of Miriam Hurley. She has something she would like to um, uh, comment on. Miriam? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't have any comments. My apologies. I... Oh, <laughs> that's okay. Well, thank you for being attentive. We appreciate that. All righty. Lydia Go Gonzalez. Lydia Gonzalez had her hand raised. Lydia, we're ready to hear from you now, please. Um, hi, good afternoon. I don't, uh, um, thank you very much, by the way, for the opportunity um, to ask a question. It's, it's unclear to me um, in, in terms of flexibility. I, I understand that it's um, as per department and uh, the supervisor obviously uh, can work, is supposed to, or at least would like to, uh, you know, work with the employee in terms of uh, flexibility. But um, what if the office is typically not open during the weekends um, and obviously working late hours and tending to the you know, to your families at night is not a possibility as well. You know, what exactly is FIU providing in terms of a, a clear definition of flexible schedule? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. I'm going to ask Joanna to prepare, but, but as she does, what I want to share uh, is that, you know, we talked earlier about um, protecting each other's health, right? and the health of our organization, right, is, is our core business. What is it that we do here and how do we support? And there may be instances where with all of our very best efforts, uh, we're not able to accommodate a request. That just may very well happen. I mean, we, listen, we master turning the impossible into the inevitable. We, we master that. But there are instances where we, we're just not able to, uh, for whatever those reasons, and you gave some really great examples, if the work is not done, uh, during the particular time of day that I'm available to do it. That is a consideration. Um, I'll ask Joanne to speak to that when those instances come up and we have uh, have need to work with doc, uh, departments. Um, uh, that, uh, Joanne's area is, is where we um, where we do that. So Joanne, if you would respond, I'd appreciate it. Sure, sure. And usually some um, when we start having those conversations, the supervisors are not um, a, we have those conversations to make them more aware of the, the options that are there. Um, and sometimes when you talk it through, um, they get a better understanding of, oh, this is how we can get the work done and, and we can, we can have, <laughs> have the conversations. Um, sometimes if it's not, um, then um, the, uh, one of the last options or last resorts is um, maybe we can talk about doing a reduced schedule. So if you're not able to work full time because of child care issues or dependent care issues, you can um, say I, I can devote maybe you know 20 hours or I can devote uh, 30 hours or something like that. So we, those are different options that we can, we can explore um, to help you continue with, with your work and continue uh, working with the students. And um, so it's just a matter of having these really kind of conversations and, and, and getting creative in how we can, we can make that happen. Thank you, appreciate that. Lydia, I hope that that was helpful to you. We had one more hand raise I want to address. Uh, Shara Gonzalez. Shara, are you available? Hi, uh, thank you. Um, since I raised my hand, the question was answered. Wonderful, wonderful. That means we're getting it done, Dr. Rosenberg. Mm -hmm. We're listening. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask, uh, there's, we're going to ask a, a, a question about, um, elder care. Well, this is a question, not necessarily about children, 
Um, and I believe Gabrielle Marchesio wants to ask the question live. Gabrielle? Or Gabriel Marchesio? Okay. Um, yeah. Hey, hello. Hey, I don't hey. know if y'all can hear me. Yes, okay. we can. Thank you. Yeah, just uh, basically exactly what it says on the tin there. I have a person in my household who's got an autoimmune uh, disorder, and from my understanding from the CDC site, that makes them uh, considered a vulnerable personage uh, regarding this COVID <clears throat> disease. So I'm concerned about transmitting to them uh, particularly. So I'm wondering if that's the grounds for continuing to work remotely. Thank you, thank you for, for sharing that and asking that question. And I'll just say, I, I, I don't know that it's necessarily grounds uh, because as we mentioned earlier, there, there are things that we can do in the absence of a vaccine, which would be to maintain our physical distancing, to wear our face coverings, to keep our hands washed, to use our P3 app, to um, you know, not have lunch in a lunchroom with, and, I, and I'm just adding that part, right? But you need to keep yourself physically distanced and when we do that, um, we mitigate the, the ability for spread. So um, does that in and of itself constitute, you know, justification for, um, you know, one working remotely or not? Not in and of itself. The, um, I think Carlos spoke, of, spoke to it earlier. Um, certainly the business needs and your, your dialogue with your leader, your supervisor, your chair, um, determining what the needs are for the business you know, would, would be the thing that would guide. But, but as we're asking everyone now, uh, if you can work remotely, we want, we want people to work remotely, okay? And what if, um, sorry to interrupt, this is kind no, of a tag no. on a question. Um, not that this has happened or anything, but just uh, as a hypothetical situation, what if there's a disagreement as to whether individual, uh, their position can be continuing to work remotely and there's a dispute on that point uh, compared to a supervisor or a media manager. Well, let's do this, Gabrielle. Let's go to the uh, commander in chief and ask Dr. Rosenberg if he would speak to us about um, remote working for the next uh, uh, period of time. But before you do that, Dr. Rosenberg, let me just say to all of you, all 715 of you, we are going to stay on a little bit longer. We are enjoying the conversation. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll be on for another about 10 or 15 minutes beyond the three o'clock hour. So I wanted to give you that good news and then ask Dr. Rosenberg if he could respond to Gabrielle. Gabriel. Yeah, I think that uh, Gabrielle, I, I know that first of all, um, obviously your consideration for your, your family member, your loved one is very, very important. And uh, that <clears throat> times like this uh, is in, in many ways what drives us to want to have this conversation. Um, we're gonna be remote. You may recall that the, the provost and I put out a couple of different messages a couple of weeks ago. And um, my message was we're gonna continue to be remote. We, we were thinking uh, early, a month before, uh, you know, in early July that we would uh, be uh, remote one more month and then we would uh, start to repopulate the university. And uh, nobody could anticipate the kind of uh, uh, spike that we would experience and the difficulties for our community as a consequence. And in many ways, we're still at, you know, right at almost the top of that spike. So our, our sense is that we need to stay uh, working remote uh, for the next couple of weeks, at least as many people as can. And so as Vice President Hudson mentioned, we do want people to stay remote uh, unless there are circumstances that would um, um, necessitate that you come back. So that's part one. Part two is um, we, we hope that you don't have a difference of views with your supervisor. And we're, we know that supervisors are under a lot of pressure to make sure that they're fair and consistent and to make sure that uh, everybody has uh, the sense that they're being treated fairly and, 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 and equally. Uh, we're gonna work extra hard to make sure that supervisors, we, we probably need to do some more communication with supervisors to keep them up to date on what uh, our latest thinking is. And um, I think that 
Vice President Hudson mentioned the word flexibility. We're gonna to try to be as flexible as possible. Clearly, if you're not satisfied with, with an element of your assignment or uh, with a particular response that you're getting, you, 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 have, you have recourse, all right? And um, you have people who will listen and try to, try to help you as much as possible. Uh, because, because we know that, that even though we don't know where the end is, we know there's another, there, we know that there is an, an other side to this, uh, there will be a post-pandemic uh, a, 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 a rise uh, on our parts. And we want everybody with us, and we want everybody to have gotten through that as uh, successfully as they can. So we're gonna be sensitive to your concern, is my, is my, is my response. But right now, we see remote uh, as uh, being the norm, and uh, we will need to repopulate uh, to make sure that we meet the needs of our students who are gonna be in face-to-face -face classes. Not that many, but there will be. To make sure that we meet the needs of our students in the residence halls, and to make sure that we meet the needs of our students who may need a place to study because they can't get their studying done uh, maybe where they live. And as long as everybody's following the rules uh, with masking and physical distancing, we're gonna be fine. Thank you so much for those words, Dr. Rosenberg. Gabrielle, did that answer uh, pretty much your question? Yes, thank you. Thank uh, you. And Dr. Perfect. Rosenberg, that was so reassuring. Um, I'm so happy you, um, you shared that. I'm going to ask Martha Meyer, because her question is very much aligned with um, what you just shared, Dr. Rosenberg. Martha, would you come live and, and answer, I mean, ask your question uh, so we can provide answers for the, the group? I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yeah, a little. You're a little faint. If you can turn it up a little Am bit. Am I that'd be great. faint? I, I'm never faint. Nobody no, no, no. Your speaking. voice. Your voice was faint. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, um, I'm in the College of Art Sciences and Education, and one of the things that our um, administration did this summer, which was really amazing, was put together some general well-being. Um, Zoom meetings where we did mindfulness, we did meditation, we did yoga, it was all via Zoom, et cetera, et cetera. So my question is, are there any plans to do that kind of university-wide or within units so that faculty and staff who are feeling tapped out and feeling kind of at the end of their rope have something to look forward to that is helpful and allows them the opportunity to kind of mentally, because we're stuck. Right? We're stuck at home and we need breaks. And so wondering if there is anything in the plans or the works for that across the university. Well, thank you so much for that. And, and, and that goes certainly in line with what the president just shared. And we talked about earlier that self care, right? Um, we do have a, a wonderful menu of options um, through our Office of um, Employee Assistance. We do Mental Health Matters. It, you know, it covers those issues about professionally how we can support each other and excuse me, how we can maintain mental health even under these circumstances. We have mind, mindful uh, leadership during critical times. We have many of you that are leading, leading others um, and how we can, you know, uh, manage through that. Uh, we do have, and I want to say um, Nathan Post Weekly, um, I believe it's yoga online or, and things like that. So I'm going to ask you, and, and we, I, I have your name, Martha. We're going to send to you some of the things that we um, we present. We have them, we release them weekly, either through our wellness wire or our um, um, uh, weekly news and updates. And we provide that information. And we're so inundated with so much information. It's like, oh my God, one more email. But there's a lot of good content there uh, that speaks to exactly what you're talking about. And so uh, the team is constantly doing some things and, and I welcome, even on this call, we would certainly again, welcome whatever you might offer uh, as recommendations for us to, to do. And I heard you say the yoga, that type of thing online. So um, if it's not something we currently do, we'll make sure that we can add those things. If you have any other thoughts about things that we can do, uh, we certainly wanna hear that. Can I ask uh, Martha, just as a follow up, uh, Martha, what did you find most useful? Was it, um, you know, you mentioned a different uh, number of uh, different uh, uh, gatherings. Um, and I'm curious about your views on mindfulness and whether you found that helpful. 
Um, I do. I was actually a part of helping to deliver some of that as a certified yoga instructor. I was, I was tasked with part of that. There were three faculty members that put together, um, we did four sessions with faculty in case. Um, we did a, a yoga session where we moved. It was all chair yoga, so nobody needed to move um, outside of their chair. They could all do it at their desk. We did meditation, um, a mindful meditation, and then we did kind of a talk on some mindful practices that people can inter, um, intersperse in their days and their lives, resources that are available beyond just FIU. And um, the feedback that we got from our colleagues was overwhelming and wonderful and positive because they felt like they had a chance to breathe. So I think part of that mindfulness um, process that our, that our faculty got was just the opportunity that like they weren't alone in that process and that there were these, there was this sense of com camaraderie and community for them to be able to um, take a beat in their day, in the craziness of their day, so that they had an opportunity to just kind of be alone and be them with themselves. And so I found, I found it very helpful and it was really nice to see people that you don't normally see show up at things like that. Wow. Do, do I answer your question? Yes, thank you. I think it's all the more meaningful because everybody's you know, working from home or someplace else. So how do you, you know, maintain community uh, that isn't, uh, that is, uh, that is, um, enables, um, if you will, a, an identity beyond the simple work of the moment. So I, I like that. I like that a lot. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. thank you so much, Martha. And, and while you all are listening, maybe you have some tips or some things that you're doing that you want to share with us uh, while we're having our cup of uh, Starbucks um, that, that would be helpful for, for the group as Martha just shared. Um, we would love to hear that. Uh, I don't have any new questions that have come up into uh, the chat. So um, if we're not having any additional questions, Dr. Rosenberg, I'd like to turn it over to you and, and give some closing remarks. Yes, first of all, let me, let me thank everybody for being on. This has been very, very helpful. I, um, the most important thing is that we're gathering information from you. And I feel that um, if we can continue to have these kinds of conversations. We will get better at being better. Um, we intend to uh, find a way to help you by leveraging the tremendous student and faculty talent we have here at our university. It ought to be, if we're serious about Panthers, protecting Panthers, we ought to find a way to make sure that this talent that we have, people want to help. Everybody I've talked to, they want to help. They want to be involved. They know that we're in special circumstances. And special circumstances require special responses, and special responses will get uh, will have special impacts. And now more than ever, uh, we need that. This semester that's coming up, I believe, is going to be very challenging. This semester that's coming up, I believe we can do it better than ever if we stick together. We help each other. We 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 think uh, we're we're willing we're willing to speak truth to power. We're willing to to say uh, unpopular things as long as they're done, that's done respectfully. I think we'll come out of this much better. Uh, what we're building here is a new, what I call moral ecosystem. And that moral ecosystem is built upon uh, self-respect, uh, flexibility, intentionality, clarity, uh, being calm. And uh, that'll hold us well for the next, because there's always a next, hopefully never this drastic, but, um, there, there's always a next. So I want to thank you. Um, I, I, we're, we're looking forward now to sitting down and finding out how we can start. I know that uh, the Dean Heithouse is anxious to get uh, some of the programs going that, uh, that he was asked about. I, I'm, I'm sure that's going to be done uh, very quickly. So please look for uh, more from us in the next couple of weeks. If you have additional thoughts, uh, please email me at mark.rosenberg at fiu.edu or, uh, or uh, to uh, uh, Vice President Hudson. Uh, we are here uh, because we care and we want to get it better. And uh, so I want to thank you all. Don't forget graduations. You all worked really hard to get our students to graduation. Pick it up on Sunday and, and enjoy it. And, and, and 
and rejoice in the fact that there's so much success out there amidst so many, many difficulties. Thank you all. Have a great weekend. Be careful about this storm. Watch for our advisories. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much.